มามาเฮ้ยเพื่อนและเพื่อนสาวๆทุกคนที่ไม่รู้จักฉันชื่อบ๊อบมักบรีดวันนี้ขอต้อนรับที่บ๊อบมักบรีดฟิล์มฉันเป็นนักล่าฉันเป็นชาวบ้านฉันอยู่ในเทนเนสซีฉันทำการล่าสัตว์ทุกอย่างที่คุณเห็นบนหน้าจอนี่คือสิ่งที่เป็นหลักฐานสำหรับการผลิตทีวีแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบแบบ If you're interested in that sort of thing, go check out my other channel, Black Powder TV. So I do a lot of modern modern hunting. There's no place for that over on Black Powder TV. So um, I started this channel so I can bring to you guys all the other stuff I do. I, you know, I live on a farm out here in Tennessee, and and we just we have a little bit of everything. We have hogs, we have chickens, and ducks, and geese, and bees, and donkeys, and goats, and We'll do that. I'll show you some of the guns we'll use, some of the setup we'll use. Uh, we do a lot of decoying, uh, e collars, uh, crow hunting. You know, all of it. We got blinds and duck hunting and and all of that. So we'll get into all of that as this progresses. But it'll also be interspaced with farm stuff. That's basically the gist of this. I, I'm making this film to show you some of my guns, kind of tell you what it's about, and then. I got a little bonus. I went out this morning to deer hunt, take a doe, and uh, that would be the introduction video. Small introduction, nice big doe hunt, and up in the up in the back stand. And I was excited. Got up this morning early, had it all game planned, had the GoPros, had all of it, and yeah. So you'll see what happens in a minute. So let's run over here. I'll show you the guns real quick. All right. So you can't really see a lot. The floor is piled high with shotgun shells, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, all my other stuff, all my my uh, duck blind stuff, my buckets, my decoys, and I'll get the GoPro and do a little pass and show you guys that. But what I want to do right now is show you a few of the guns. So these are a few. I'll show you more later. But here's the um, Benelli SB3, beautiful gun. Uh, extension tube carries extra three rounds. I've got them for my three gun, you know, six round extension tubes. We shoot with the shot cam, so you'll get that footage as well. Um, I'm trying to retrofit the shot cam on some of the flint locks and stuff, so that's pretty fun. So the Benelli SB3 is one that you guys will see um, quite a bit of, and that's a 12 gauge. And the other is the um, the Franke Affinity 3, and that's in 20 gauge. So set up for the shot cam as well. I'm playing around with some dot sights on here, um, and we'll do some videos on that. What I think about that, how it limits it on on what you can do with it. You know, it's kind of a turkey gun. Your cheeks up off of the cheek rest, um, but you are looking at a dot sight, so a good cheek plan is not very important. Uh, in that scenario, but uh, I'm just playing with it. Those will come on and off. I've got Trigicons and and uh, and the uh, Burris Fast Fire here, and I've got two or three others. So we'll look at those as well. So that's all part of what we'll do: scopes, dot sights, different kinds of optics, chokes, um, and we'll just get out and plink, get outside. Beautiful Tennessee woods here on the farm, and uh, and have a good time. So oh, one more. I'll show you just to get you get you wetted. So here's the 17 HMR little varmint gun. Love this. Got a got a uh, Diamondback tactical 4x16 mounted on here. Love this gun. CZ 457 and 17 HMR. And we get out with the e-collar predator call lay out in the fields out here and call in bobcats. Uh, do a little um, coyote hunting 
and uh, have a ball. So you'll see, you'll see this in action. We've got others, 4570s, 3030s, old 3030s, so lots of stuff. But these are these are my primary hunting guns: the Benelli, the Franke, and the CZ 457 in 17 HMR. And I do shoot a lot of 22 long rifle too, so uh, that barrel will go on there. So you see about 6,000 rounds of 17 HMR, and I, I blow through them. So we, we do a lot of shooting. So um, I'll show you the shop real quick on the GoPro, and then you'll immediately fade over to the deer hunt from this morning that left me very unhappy. Flintlock section. It's got all my bags. I have a bag and horn for each rifle. Uh, and, and a separate bag for the pistols. I also collect uh, custom handmade knives and we'll show you those as we go along. Workshop, I build flint locks. I also work on stuff like, you know, antique clocks and um, antique wall clocks. So we have that kind of thing going on too. So here's the, the other part of the shop. There's my TV, my music, chronographs, all my video equipment over here, and some tools. I don't clean this up for you, so you're gonna see it the way it is. And my editing station, computer, all there. So my still, I distill water in that still. My buckets, my bird buckets, Shotgun shells, bags, this is my turkey stuff, some of my duck bags and stuff, and decoys. I got out uh, some of the dove decoys and the crow decoys, and then my sort of lounging area, and we'll give you a peek outside. And we live in, there's five miles to the next road, and it's solid woods, a couple of fields, but solid wood so we are way out here in the country we've got a couple four-wheelers we'll run around on the old truck i finally my old truck finally broke down and i had to get a new one well it's 10 years old but it's new to me so now let's take a look at my hard morning in the deer stand I think I got her. I heard her crash. She busted through the woods. I hit her there and she busted through the woods this way. And then down the hill. This is a nice little doe. Oh. I'm sitting here shivering. All I'm wearing is this light. And the temperature dropped in the last hour. It's 8.45. They usually start moving around here about 8.30.
All right, we just got down from the stand. There's a stand, crossbow still hanging from the safety strap. This deer stand is in the back corner of the farm. So this little uh, fence line here runs up to the back corner and then runs to the um, to the west and we've got this little open in the corner that's where I shot her she crossed right in front of that tree the big the big old poplar right over the fence just before she got to the tree line I called her she kind of stopped, but she she didn't come to a complete stop. So boy, I'm hoping I'm hoping I hit her. I didn't see the I didn't see the lighted knock. It's been a little misty today. We're gonna wait here a few more minutes. Give her a few more minutes. It's only been about 15 minutes since I took the shot. We'll walk down. And, uh, and see if we can see some blood and then track her into the woods. All right, it's been about a half hour. I'm going to um, bring you down here and we're going to see if we can find a blood trail. I'm a little concerned because uh, I really didn't hear the whack. When I watch the video, um, I'll be able to see exactly what happened, but usually you hear a nice thwack i might have just not been focused on it um so it, it may be on on film but um but i have no memory of the of the whack of it hitting her so i hope i didn't miss that was 35 yards um uh, let's grab the crossbow I'll put you on back on my brim and and we'll walk down there. All right. So if you look, you can see on these trees I've got markers 20 30 40 by the big tree, 50 on the crook tree. And she crossed right here. You can see this section of the barbed wire and we'll get, uh, we'll check the trail cam too because it probably caught her crossing. But you can see the barbed wire here is fine, but here it's rubbed down and here Further down, nothing. This is a cr pretty regular crossing point. Came right here. I don't think she angled. You would think that she'd have come across and angled because that's an easier path, but I'm pretty sure she was here. And you can see the stand from here. So I'm pretty sure she was here, which means my bolt should be right here but with this downhill slope from the stand they usually slide under the under the leaves and you never find them out here I'm gonna lean the crossbow up against this tree and we'll go try to find her So, whacked her here. She may have been here, but I'm pretty sure she was there and just going to run through there. And she ran into this clearing and then veered off to the right downhill. So if I hit her good, she should be somewhere behind this clump up to where that tall poplar is right there, right along that path.
with this scarce uh, green underbrush it's kind of hard to pick up blood trail um, you're hoping for a drop on the leaves here Well, guys, you're talking about a real disappointment. If I missed her, I just grabbed the crossbow and working my way down the path here. I hadn't missed a shot with this crossbow in some time, but like I said earlier, I was getting chilly. I was starting to get uncomfortable, starting to fidget and starting to shiver a little bit. And then she popped out and boy, I think I was a little jacked up because I got her, I don't know, I, I think I might have got her on the 30 yard reticle and she was about 37, but I, I should have still hit her. Um, I don't know, we're gonna have to take a look. So we'll see you at the shop. Dadgummit. 